Hello, I am Nislam Bayramoglu from University of Oulu from Finland. Today I will present our work on osteoarthritis detection from plain X-ray images. This is a joint work with Nika Nieminen and Simo Saarakkala. Knee osteoarthritis, shortly called OA, is a very common progressive and degenerative musculoskeletal disease. The condition causes pain, stiffness and limitations in movement. There are different risk factors such as age, obesity, injury, repetitive use of joints, bone density, muscle weakness and gender. Unfortunately, the incidence of OA is still rising because of the aging population. It creates a heavy burden on patients, as you might suggest that their quality of life is reduced and there is also financial impact on society due to treatment cost and time of work. Therefore, any attempt to reduce this burden is precious. Unfortunately, there is no cure for OA, but its symptoms can be controlled by modifying the risk factors and with other conservative measures, for example by weight management. Therefore, early identification and treatment of OA may be critical for decreasing the chronic pain and improve joint function. It is also important to have a better understanding of the disease from research point of view to develop new treatments to slow its progression and hopefully to delay joint replacement surgery. Currently, OA is diagnosed by clinical examination and usually with X-ray imaging, and if needed, other advanced imaging modalities such as MRI scanning. But generally, it is diagnosed at a late stage, therefore it creates difficulties in disease management. Characteristic features of OA can be observed in X-ray imaging. For example, bone growth, which is called osteophyte formation, and also joint space narrowing, which is the distance between femur and tibia. These are two important features. Sclerosis and cyst formation can also be observed in plain radiographs. In this figure, I marked joint space narrowing and osteophytes. You can see both healthy knee and a severe OA new X-rays side by side. In OA case on the right, joint space width is almost lost. In clinical practice, OA severity from knee radiographs evaluated based on Kellgren and Lorentz grading system as shown in this figure. The grade varies from 0 to 4, correlating to increasing severity of OA. International diagnostic threshold for radiographic OA is KL grade 2, that is, KL less than 2 is defined as non-OA and KL greater than or equal to 2 is classified as OA, which we are interested in this work. But the main problem with this kind of grading systems is that they suffer from significant inter- and intra-observer variation. Because of this variation, several studies propose computer-assisted methods to automatically assess OA severity from radiographs and it was also shown that these computer-assisted methods provide more robust results. Early studies in the field focused on bone texture and bone shape analysis. However, the current state-of-the-art approaches for automated OA detection and grading are based on machine learning techniques such as deep learning and convolutional neural networks in particular. In these approaches, as shown in this figure, they basically feed the knee joint images to the network and then minimize the cost function regardless of the features that the network is learning. This is a standard way like we all do in this kind of classification problems. However, these state-of-the-art deep learning models have some shortcomings in this particular problem. Firstly, well-known anatomical features associated with OA were not considered at all. What are these anatomical features? The most important one is the measurement of joint space width, which is the standard tool for the assessment of knee OA progression is not included. Joint shape is also missing in these studies. 
Although the features might cover some aspects of these anatomical features, the added value of explicit inclusion to the models have not been investigated. I would like to detail why shape features are important. It was shown in the study of Gerios et al. that in contrast to the common assumption, CNNs rely extremely on textures and they perform poorly at recognizing shapes without object texture. There is also a very nice figure in the paper. If a convolutional neural network sees a cat with elephant texture, the last image, it thinks it's an elephant, even though the shape is still clearly a cat. They found this texture bias to be common for ImageNet trained CNNs, which is in contrast to the widely held belief that CNNs mostly learn to recognize objects by detecting their shapes. They also concluded that Today, machine recognition overlay relies on local object texture rather than global object shapes. Second, these approaches, generally speaking, use heavy architectures with many layers as their backbones. One of the reasons for that is taking the advantage of transfer learning or fine tuning. Therefore, whole knee joint images are resized blindly to fit to the popular architectures that they utilize. In these studies, ResNet is a popular choice. The third challenge in employing poor deep learning based approach in this problem, such models are characteristically opaque. What information in the input data makes them to make their decisions is unclear. And lastly, using whole joint images could create contextual biases when we think the bone texture. Because in OA, bony changes typically occur at certain regions. In summary, current deep learning based approaches give shape agnostic decisions, they are costly and opaque. In our study, we tackled some of these problems. In this study, we propose a model that combines bone shape and bone texture using a tiny CNN model to detect OA. We used a small region of interest from medial side and it allowed us to use a tiny CNN model that is having significantly less parameter compared to the current architectures. In addition, we propose a compact joint shape and joint space descriptor that can be used as a marker of radiographic OA. And finally, we combine these two features at the end. Firstly, let's look at the shape descriptor we propose. Currently, the accepted metric to assess OA severity is the minimum joint space width, measured between femur and tibia. This is shown on the left. However, the reproducibility of minimum joint space width is problematic and not consistent. This measurement later improved by utilizing location-specific measurements. That is, the joint space width is measured at two fixed locations. But we thought that instead of these two measurements, a rich description of the joint space width at multiple locations along the joint would be more descriptive. Our method is based on the anatomical landmarks as shown on the right and utilizes their spatial relations. We measure all the distances between femur and tibia landmarks. It's very simple. But in addition to the space width measurements, this descriptor also captures the shape of the joint. Connections can be seen in this figure much better. Shape of the bone is implicitly encoded in these measurements. But how we choose that small region of interest to assess bone texture? It is based on our previous study. In OA, the bone closest to the articular cartilage experiences the greatest effect and damage. Therefore, changes in bone texture are observed based at those regions and particularly at medial tibial compartment as shown in this figure with red mark. Inspired by this, rather than using the whole joint radiography, we employed only the most informative region in our study. 
we use two different data sets. The data from Osteoarthritis Initiative and the Multicenter Osteoarthritis Study, we trained our models on OAI and validated on most. You can see the numbers on the table. We use several reference methods to compare our approach. For texture analysis, we employed local binary patterns, LBP, fractal dimension, bilinear CNN, and anti-lyse CNN. For shape-based analysis, we compared minimum joint space width and joint space width measurements at fixed locations. We present the area under the receiver operating characteristic curves, ROC AUC, to measure classifier performance effectively. We found that, compared to the conventional methods, CNN-based texture extraction leads to better performance in detecting radiographic OA. However, bilinear CNN and anti CNN models didn't improve the performance further. For morphology-based descriptors, the rogue AUC value achieved by our method is significantly better than other joint space with measurement techniques. Actually, those ones are used for assessment of disease progression. Our combined model performed better than both texture and shape based models alone and achieves state of the art detection performance with ROG AUC 95.21. This finding suggests that bone texture and joint shape carry complementary information for automatic detection of radiographic OA. In addition to the classifier performances, we investigated the feature importance of the proposed descriptor. This figure illustrates how much each feature contributes to the model's overall predictive performance. Most of the features are equally informative and therefore cannot be ignored. This figure demonstrates the first four most important elements of our descriptor. Interestingly, the fourth one might be related to knee alignment. And finally, we evaluated the robustness of our descriptor to joint space with measurement errors and variability. The sources of errors and variability could be due to positioning accuracy in the acquisition of clinical knee x-rays and the landmark extraction method. In order to simulate this, we added Gaussian distributed noise to our descriptor with zero mean and standard deviation of 1 mm, 3 mm and 5 mm to both train and test data. This table demonstrates that our model is not sensitive to noisy measurements. To conclude, this was the first attempt at describing the bone texture using CNN. Compared to the heavy deep CNN models that use whole joint images, our tiny model still has the ability to recognize OA with high accuracy. Second, we propose a simple but efficient joint shape descriptor to detect OA from plain radiographs. And finally, our combined model achieves state-of-the-art performance. There are also limitations in this study. Although medial OA is more common, other bone compartments such as lateral and femur margins, which might hold new and complementary information of OA were not evaluated in our study. Their inclusion could further improve the performance, which could be further investigated. Admittedly, the models which utilize whole joint radiographs have the potential to utilize those features as a rule. Therefore, they are potentially better suited for fine-grade KL classification. Two important topics for future investigations. Firstly, fusing the proposed shape descriptor with the existing deep learning models to evaluate whether they capture shape-related features inherently or their performance can be improved by the explicit inclusion of shape features. Secondly, predicting the progression of OA using our descriptor. And thank you very much. You can reach me at neslihan.bayramola at all the fee. Thank you.